Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a German post-apocalyptic thriller film called Hell. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. It is the year 2075. Temperatures worldwide have increased by 10 degrees, causing the collapse of civilization. The sun is so hot that going outside during daylight hours is dangerous. Crops have been destroyed and failed, little water or food is available, and social order is broken. The few survivors who have been adapting to this hellish world must shield their skin with excess clothing, gloves, smocks, and anything they can potentially get their hands on. At the start of the movie, a young woman named Marie, her young younger sister Leonie and her boyfriend Philip are traveling through the dry wasteland. The only thing that protects them from the deadly sun is an old Volvo wagon, which is taped up with metal mesh and newspapers on the windows. Only a narrow strip is left open for the driver to see. Although the world has become mostly uninhabitable, it is rumored that the mountains are still green and lush, with abundant food supplies for everyone. This is where the trio is heading. Their usual routine consists of scavenging through wrecked cars and gas stations in hopes of finding finding extra gas, water, or even food. The condition is so severe that they even raid toilets to quench their thirst. All this while, they have to be alert of hostile survivors, as one wrong move could cost them their lives. One day, the trio comes across a ruined gas station and quickly splits up. Philip, being the leader and protector of the group, tries to obtain gasoline from the station's underground tanks and abandoned vehicles, while the women scavenge for supplies in the buildings. After a bit of looking around, the two sisters manage to drain some water from the bathroom water pipes. Unfortunately, while they are busy with their work, a hooded mystery man steals food and water from their car. Marie quickly notices this and screams for Philip, who is still trying to retrieve gas from the underground tank. Soon, the two go after the hooded man, only to find that their supplies are gone from the car. Philip gets angry, shouting that he is always the one having to keep an eye on them. Why is it always me who must fill up the tank? Shortly after, as Marie is looking for the man, she realizes that Leonie is gone. Scared, she screams her sister's name, but there is no response. She then fearfully goes inside the station and looks for Leonie. When she turns around, she finds that the hooded man has her sister as a hostage. He finally speaks and introduces himself as Tom. Then he tells Marie to behave and drop her weapon. The latter complies, but suddenly, Philip arrives at the scene and ambushes the man. They tussle for a while and land some solid punch on one another, but in the end, Philip subdues his opponent and the two agree to a truce of sorts. In the next scene, Tom reveals he is a local mechanic and that he has a decent amount of gas with him. He also warns Philip that it is impossible to travel for a long distance in the Volvo, as its engine is not made for extremely hot temperatures. However, he knows a way to make it more long-lasting. In exchange, he just wants a can of food and some water. Philip thinks about it for a while, and eventually, agrees. But as they are about to leave, Tom again starts talking about the engine and how it may falter at any moment. So, Philip, who does not want to take any chances, decides to bring the stranger along with them. The girls are skeptical about the idea, but Philip persuades them by saying two men are better than one. After a while, the group finally starts their journey. They drive along through the desolate roads and slowly head towards the mountains. But on their way, they are suddenly stopped by a huge metal structure that is blocking the road. The men get out and try to move it, but it just won't budge. Fortunately, with the help of their car, they manage to steer the structure clear off the road. This gives the group a moment of happiness, which they celebrate with some cheers. Just then, they notice a wrecked car a few meters down the hill. The men assume that it just crashed, so they head down to scavenge for supplies. After looking around for a while, they discover that the car belonged to a French couple. They also find some left over food, water, and gas. Through his walkie-talkie, Philip instructs Marie to bring down some bottles and canisters. However, she insists he come by himself and retrieve whatever he wants. Marie simply doesn't want to leave her sister alone. Leonie hears the conversation and realizes that they see her as a burden, so she tells Marie to go without her while she locks herself inside the car. Marie is still skeptical, but when Philip keeps calling her, she departs. After reaching them, she, along with the men, start trying out a French perfume they found inside the car. 
Right then, the group hears Leone's screams, and they realize the blocked road was a trap. They hastily climb up the hill, but Marie trips off and falls unconscious on the ground. When she wakes up, she finds herself alone in the woods. Coming back to her senses, Marie moves forward and joins Tom on the way. He explains that it was too late when he and Philip got to the car. Leone was already abducted by a group of survivors who thrive on cannibalism in this newfound, hellish world. When the duo reunites with Philip in the woods, Marie convinces them to try to free Leone. However, Philip doesn't want to risk their lives, so he wants to continue their journey to the mountains. Leone wanted to fend for herself, serves her right if she gets eaten by hu other humans. While the two are having an argument over this, Tom spots smoke in the distance and encourages the group to investigate. Wasting no time, the trio follows the smoke and realizes that it is coming from a large fire at a survivor's encampment where Leone and other hostages are kept chained up. The group is horrified by what they see, but Tom comes up with a plan. He asks Marie and Philip to help him in creating a diversion. The plan is to throw a Molotov cocktail so that Marie can take their stolen car back while he and Philip rescues Leone. Marie immediately agrees and sets off to their car parked on the road. She begins to warm up the engine when one of the abductors feels something is wrong. He comes forward to check, but at the same time, Tom throws the Molotov cocktail. This sends all the bad guys into a state of panic, and taking advantage of the opportunity, Marie starts the car and waits for the two men to arrive. However, Philip decides to go against the plan, as he is too scared to risk his life. So, instead of joining Tom, he gets into the car with Marie and urges her to drive away. In a hurry, Marie drives drives off, but she keeps asking for her sister and Tom. Philip lies that he couldn't break Leonie's chains, so he had to leave without her. During their escape, Philip's foot is badly injured in a fight with one of the abductors. He encourages Marie to consider Leonie a lost cause, but she is adamant on rescuing her. Once they reach a safe spot, Marie realizes Philip didn't even try to save her sister. She then decides to leave alone to search for Leonie. After a while, she comes across a tunnel where she finds Leonie's bag. This means that the scavengers are residing nearby. Just then, a limping shadow appears in the background, and it is Philip who apologizes for going against the plan earlier. He promises that they will look for Leonie and Tom together. However, Philip is too injured to walk, so Marie insists he stay in the tunnel until she can get help. Having no other choice, he obliges. Following this, Marie ventures out into the scorching sun, looking for traces of her sister and the scavenger Tom. Due to the overwhelming heat, she takes refuge in a nearby ruined church. She then falls falls asleep on the floor, and a few hours later, an old woman named Elizabeth awakens her. Expectedly, Marie is terrified of the stranger, but Elizabeth calms her down and offers her some water. The two then start chatting, and Marie opens up about her situation. She explains how her sister and friend have been abducted by some savages, so she is looking for them. Elizabeth reveals that she has never heard about those savages, but nonetheless, she promises to help. But first, she insists Marie come to her farm and take some rest. The latter immediately falls victim to the kind words of Elizabeth and agrees to come with her. She also reveals Philip's location and pleads for help. Later, we see Elizabeth's barn as she explains to Marie that all of her livestock have been destroyed due to the heat. There is little food and their family sustains themselves with the help of a nearby pond where they have tamed some fish. Initially, the woman seems friendly and shows around the house. She then takes Marie to a room where she can sleep for the day. Tired, Marie quickly falls asleep, only to awaken and find herself locked in the room. Peering out through a small hole, she sees a young boy playing sword fight with his friend. She leans in closer to see what looks like abducted captives being led about. Marie also sees an injured Philip being brought into the barn. This is when she realizes that Elizabeth and her family are the actual abductors who have been setting road traps and ambushing travelers. Suddenly, Elizabeth opens the locked door and barges in. She reveals that Philip will be used for his meat, as they have no other options now. He'll fill up their stomachs, that's for sure. As for Marie and her sister Leone, they will be spared because of their youth and beauty. However, they will be forced to marry Elizabeth's sons. Helpless, Marie tries to fight back, but to no avail. Elizabeth then leaves a blue dress on the table and asks her to wear it during dinner. Before locking the door, she also explains the consequences if someone is caught while trying to escape. They will be quickly executed and fed to her family members. After she leaves, Marie looks around the room, searching for an escape door. Suddenly, the door opens once again. And it's Leone. 
The sisters finally reunite and embrace each other. With tears in her eyes, Marie promises that she will get them out. The two sisters then begin making a rope out of their clothes so that they can jump out of the window and escape. Unfortunately, there is a knock at the door once again, and Marie hurriedly instructs her sister to pretend to be asleep. Elizabeth's son, Misha, opens the door and mentions that he is here to aid Leonie's wounds. But when he gets too close to the window, where the sisters have planned their escape, Marie suddenly kisses him. When he gets distracted, she strikes him with a large piece of wood. Injured and angry, Misha begins to choke her. But in the nick of time, Leonie smashes a heavy object on him, knocking him out. After that, the two sisters hurriedly prepare to escape through the window. Marie urges Leonie to jump through the window first and go to the woods to hide. The little sister obliges, and after she is gone, Marie hears someone at the door. She decides to stay back and play it cool. She then changes her clothes into the blue dress that Elizabeth left for her. Shortly after, Marie goes downstairs and soon stumbles upon Elizabeth, who is busy preparing dinner. The woman seems happy, as it seems that Marie is adapting to the place. When asked about Misha, she tells Elizabeth that he is still cleaning up Leonie's wounds. She is then guided to the kitchen, where Elizabeth's whole cannibal family sits down for dinner. They chant some creepy prayers, thank you cannibal Jebus, and then get ready to eat some human meat. Marie is also served a plate, and everyone is waiting for her to begin. Scared, she tries to escape from the family, but Misha, who has regained his consciousness, stops her by the door. In the next scene, Marie is bound and put in the slaughterhouse. There, she sees Philip, who is also tied across the room. Soon after, Misha arrives and executes Philip, ready to turn his corpse into human food. When the murderous Misha leaves the slaughterhouse, Marie manages to grab a knife from Philip's clothes and untie herself. She then escapes and opens a locked door in the barn, where she finds many captives, including Tom. Wasting no time, all of them start fleeing, with the cannibal family in pursuit. Tom fights with and dispatches several of the abductors. When Marie is nearly hit by one of them, Tom saves her by attacking the abductor from behind. While the men wrestle for their lives, Marie manages to escape and run through the woods in search of her sister. After a while, she does find Leonie, but the latter is being bound by Elizabeth and one of her sons. The old woman then confronts Marie, saying that she thought Marie was different. Now, they want to take Leonie with them so that she can marry one of Elizabeth's sons and raise a family. Marie plays it cool and waits for an opening, and when the woman comes close, she takes her chance and stabs her with the knife from earlier. While the son mourns his mother Elizabeth, Marie releases Leonie and escapes. The two sisters then join Tom and flee to the mountains, where they find drips of water and cool places. Up in the sky, they also see birds. The trio then looks over the ridge at the Garden of Hills in hope of a better fate there. However, they see nothing but even more wrecked and parched wasteland down in the valley. What, uh, what did they expect? Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.